Hello everyone. I thought I'd do a review of the web interface for configuring the AT&T Unite. Uh, this is AirCard Air Card 770S um, that I got from Freedom Pop. Um, works on the AT&T networks. Um, and you can see the dis, uh, link in the description uh, for my blog post about it and also link to my other um, review, uh, video review of it. So um, just a brief overview for those of you who may not be quite as uh, familiar with configuring things. Um, you may not want to configure a lot of these, but there is a lot of settings that you can configure just by going through the web interface to it versus actually um, using just the um, the, the touchscreen um, interaction. So one of the things here, um, so you, once you get there and log in, default pass, uh, you, you would go to at t Unite in the browser and it should take you there or find um, what the gateway IP is for your network once you are connected to it. But once you connect to the Wi-Fi on it, um, the first time you should be able to get access to it. Now, making setting changes will make the device reboot and you may have to reconnect. So if you change the password or the network name or stuff like that, uh, just be aware that um, it will interrupt your connection. You'll have to reconnect to make further changes. Um, so once you log in, uh, the default password is AT&T admin, ATT admin, ATT admin uh, is the default password to get in. And you can change that later. So mine is not connected to the broadband right now to, to sell signal. So um, I have it turned off so it's not wasting any of my um, battery uh, or any of my data. Um, and so for that reason, I'm just connected through it. Um, over here, you can see connection details, main Wi-Fi, who all devices are connected, the battery life left on it, um, the network name and the password, right? And that's not my normal password, but because it shows my password up, I just decided to change it to that, so. Okay, so once you're logged in, this is the screen you see, but then we go to Wi-Fi and you can get most of the settings that you probably wanna get here there's more advanced settings and you can get to those through the settings area as well um, first off there's the main Wi-Fi and the guest Wi-Fi this is just like a router so if you can configure a lot of it just like you would a normal router um, the the Wi-Fi um, turn it on and off for the main Wi-Fi you can turn the guest Wi-Fi on and off if you're going to use it for guests or if you want somebody to be able to attach to it and not get your normal network name that would be um, you would use um, but I'm not doing that so I'm only using it for me and the family because we're not really using it a lot so I'm not using it uh, with guests so I just have that turned off um, you can then modify the network name here and the password uh, which I would recommend over the default one that comes uh, or you could leave it the default one if you want but one of those changes that you might want to make a little different uh, name for and then the quick config down here some of these settings will help with uh, some information so whether or not the Wi-Fi range uh, is for standard for best battery, boost the range. Standard, I would use most of the time because I'm just gonna have it in a bag and pull it out and throw it on the table or whatever next to me. Um, for boosted range, probably if I was going to have it actually installed in the camper um, uh, in a permanent position, then I might wanna do that so I can get to it from, you know, picnic table outside or a hammock or whatever I want to do um, so I have better better range but I would probably only do that if I had actually plugged into the USB all the time to keep it continually charging um, whether or not you show the Wi-Fi information which is the the name of the network and the password on the home screen you can make that decision there uh, the max number of devices um, you can make this change and edit if you're going to use guest network then obviously this determines how many people could attach to your guest network, which I'm not using the guest network, so I have guest disabled. And then standby, which is another one of those things. So the, the Wi-Fi will shut off if nothing's connected to it, and it won't be like wasting your battery um, after five minutes is what I've got. So uh, you could pick one of the other options if you want. Those are the overall main settings. If we go to the more uh, advanced and complex settings you'll see we get four tabs um, a lot of information and some of these tabs have sub tabs here um, that you can flip between so this one um, screen brightness is something else you may want to adjust screen timeout is something else you may want to adjust based on um, whether or not um, you want to try to tweak the most battery life out or not um, or you know screen shutting off 
at 30 seconds, maybe that annoys you um, because, um, you know, it shuts off too fast um, for, you know, I've just got mine set to one minute. So Wi-Fi sleep, just that one again, five minutes is what I've got mine set to. Home page is where you can change the password for, um, the, this doesn't matter, um, really just leave that alone because you don't actually, when you log in, you don't actually enter the password. Um, you just, I mean, the, the username, you just enter the password. There's only a password field on the home page of the uh, web interface. So so you can change your password here from the default one, um, especially if you're going to open it up to guest people to, to access, um, to keep people from being able to get into it and um, and start making changes and wreaking havoc on you if you didn't want them in there. <laughs> Um, software and reset here, you can re um, factory reset it back if you mess up the settings, want to go back to the defaults, that's important to know. Um, you can check for software updates here if you want, um, see if there's any updates to the software on the router, and you can update them later. Uh, you can download your settings and save it as a file locally that you can then return and upload it again. If you get your settings all done the way you want it, download a copy of it, then if you mess it up, like I've been doing while I've been doing this. <laughs> you can go back and you can upload it and put it back in. Uh, for Wi-Fi, there's basic advanced Mac filtering. Um, the basic stuff is, you know, network names, passwords, same stuff we saw on the other screen. You can have this generate a new password every time for the guest Wi-Fi if you're going to use guest Wi-Fi. And then back to these same standard settings that you've seen before here already. Advanced is going to dig a little bit deeper. You can actually change the mode if you wanted to. I don't know why, but you could. Um, Wi-Fi channel, if you wanted to select a specific channel, because of the nature of these devices, I don't think that's, I, I like to leave it at auto, just because I never know where I'm going to be. Um, even if I had it in the camper, I wouldn't know where, as I move around and had it permanently installed in the camper, I wouldn't know like from one campground to another or running from you know, next to another camper where somebody might be using one. Um, so auto lets it pick a channel that's not being used. So best option probably. And you can set up encryption security settings there. Mac filtering. This is if you really want to lock it down to just yourself and your computer. So you would just, you know, come in here and basically give it a, a whitelist or, or whatever that you could then just put your MAC address from your computer on there so that only you could connect to it. Probably not necessary for most people. Mobile broadband gives us three options here. Preferences, APN, and SIM security. Preferences, um, you, I have mine set to never connect. Uh, I have to manually turn it on. This is so that I'm not wasting my bandwidth. Um, I'm trying to be a little diligent about it, especially on the free plan um, where you don't get much. So I don't want background processes and things on my computer necessarily um, running and um, you know using bandwidth unless I'm really going to actually connect and use it and need to do something with it. Um, you can also select it to always be on and always when roaming. So. Network mode, um, you can adjust these settings, but I would leave it at default, honestly. APNs, nothing really to do here unless you're going to add another network in here to connect to. SIM security, if you want to use that. And then the router tab gives us a couple of what we're more familiar with is router options for configuring a router. So basic port forwarding and port filtering. Probably don't need this on a lot of things unless you are using it in more of like a, a standard place where it's going to be um, used repetitively. Um, port forwarding, you know, you can turn it on, turn it off, and, and, and set up that if you needed it. Um, Changes port filtering, you could set up to give it a whitelist or a blacklist. Um, for the basic stuff here, back to basic, it's just you know, turn on and off universal plug and play, set up the IP address for the LAN if you want to change that. Not necessarily needed. Um, some of these other settings, you could just leave them to the defaults uh, unless you know what you're doing. 
and most people probably won't need this because most of what I find uh, is necessary for all of these other settings here to get changed is people who are doing gaming or they're doing other uh, things and usually you're doing that from home. You're not necessarily doing that over a cellular signal. Um, it's kind of like watching video over the cell signal. It's You can do it, but it uses a lot of bandwidth and a lot of your data plan. Um, and it may be choppy. Depends on where you are and what your signal is. So that's the rundown on the inter uh, interface for the AT&T Unite. Um, so hope that's been helpful. We'll give you guys a little bit of a view of what that looks like um, and what you can configure. Again, I think most of the stuff on the, the first screens here are the important things to think about, which is mostly related to battery life and how you can make the battery last longer um, and, and not be used quite as heavily. Um, so again, check out the link in the description for my um, review of Freedom Pop and uh, what we're doing with it um, and hope that this has been helpful. Thanks.